You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. All right, we're here. Inside the Friars Club. What's up, everybody? How's hey, it going? Hello. What's up? How's hello, Friars Club. This is an in-person it's podcast. It's beautiful here. I can see all your eyes. We're in this great room. Yeah. It's fantastic. Keaton is in New York City. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wearing... Um, what kind of a jacket is that? Leather? It's like formal cowboy. Yes. He's a, that I'm that's dressed so in. like at the country club. He's yeah. like the bad boy you, you went on a date. Cowboy the, black tie. Yeah, yeah, cowboy black tie. The but, belt, but, I have but to there's, say. Thank you. The belt, like, it's it's a stunning belt. Very much like kind of Santa Fe looking belt. But this is part of my plan, see, because when I, when I used to visit New York as a tourist, I was amazed at how nice everybody was. Then I moved here, and all of you decided to be assholes. Right. Yes. Like, the second I moved here, the mayor sent out a message with my photo in it and be a dick to me. And now I'm coming back, so I'm intentionally playing up the Texas thing so that people will be nice to me. And so far, hard neutral. I'll take it. But your Texas look, is it's a very Austin, Texas. Yes. Which is similar to a Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yes, that's true. Meaning it's not like cowboy. Brooklyn plus cowboy. Urban cowboy. Yes. Yes. It's urban Which is basically what I am. We We could do a game show with like actual Texas people. See if you could pick him out. Like, is he yeah. living in New York or Brooklyn? Or That's, Texas or Brooklyn? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar. Recently moved to yeah. Austin from Brooklyn. Right. So yeah. before we get into this, let's yeah. all get our plugs out of the way. Okay. Let's do it. Right. I am recording right here at the Friars Club on March 11th, my next comedy album. Kaplan will be there. Dr. Andrea Jones Roy will be there. That's right. Um, I, I believe Brian Sack, my friend, and a yeah, he's that's coming. Times uh, a guest on my show is going to be there. So even if you don't want to hear my comedy, come just to see these mega stars. <laughs> <laughs> come, mega to the, come to crowd. the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah star-studded audience. Star-studded audience. Well, we should do a red carpet. And a step That's and a repeat a great idea. to enter. The, <laughs> and we need Turner Sparks and World Smartest Podcast Network. We need someone to interview us on the carpet, though. Who's going to be that person? Oh, that's a good idea. Well, it's Teddy Kaplan. We'll get your kid. <laughs> how, how much would it cost for you all to chip in and get a limo? Because I think that'd be a fun evening. And just have it parked around the just corner, driving around. You all, you all get to take turns making out in it. It's a good <laughs> idea. I'm making out with any of you people. <laughs> no, you you do it with your significant other. Oh, okay. and, uh, we're like we're, we're out for that period. Yeah, all right. Anyway, She's March 11th, yeah. uh, right? 7 p.m., 9 p.m. Go to turnersparks.com, excuse me, to get tickets. Um, and that's it. And we're and Kaplan and I host uh, Lost in America. Thank you. Last time Heaton put this show out, we got a ton of new listeners. So Heaton heads. heads mm-hmm. Roy boys, <laughs> they all joined. <laughs> they all joined us. So now uh, uh, we need more of you because um, <laughs> we need more advertising the dollars. The keys did not sound desperate. Lost yeah. in America. What was the, what did we put out last week? We've been talking about Ukraine. We've had comedians based in Ukraine on the show. And we've been talking about China. We oh, talk- yeah. We had a guy Beijing, episode was about Tony, Tony Cho in Beijing last week. All right. Yeah. I think I said this on Twitter, but I mean it. I get more news from YouTube than I do from the actual news. The yes. Main, the lamestream media has yeah. nothing on us. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. And they copy us. We'll do a story. We did a story on Bosnia a few weeks ago, and then I'll see in The Economist three weeks later. It's like, Bosnia is crumbling. And yeah. it's like, yeah. When, we, when WSPN sneezes, The Economist catches a cold. <laughs> yeah. The whole exactly. world waits for us to pod. Yeah. And in the yeah. news. We yeah. broke the Ukraine story months ago. We broke it. And yeah. you did it in December. <laughs> yeah, in December. That Russia was attacked. I heard you gave Putin the idea. Yeah. <laughs> we gave a listen. We yeah. told him to attack in the winter. We we broke that news months ago. We said, yeah. wait till February. You got a home field advantage. You know how to fight in the snow. That's and right. so. Putin, if you're listening for $5 a month, be our Patreon subscriber, and we will be on your We'll be your lackey. Yeah. Yes, we will promote all of your Shija games. Yeah. We, NATO, whatever you want to say about NATO, we'll say it. So. If you ever get Putin as a guest on the show, I think we should invite him to a round table. Done. All right, great. He's got to do it shirtless. All right, yeah. fine. And Fine. then I'm in. We, we will do yeah. a topless authoritarian <laughs> episode where all of us, all of us don't wear shirts and we Our all pick bears. animals to fight. Yeah. Uh, it would maybe go in submarine. We'll do it in a submarine. It'd yeah. be a good episode. It'd make yeah. for a good podcast. Heaton, go ahead. Or Andrea, go ahead. Yeah. All right. I'll plug. I have a show on March 1st at Caveat in New York City. It's in the Lower East Side. Uh, and it's called the Data Science Spectacular. Mm. And it's... Uh, an academic lecture, comedy show, and circus performance all in one to demystify what data science is and talk about how everyone can and should get involved. And you can come in person, which would be awesome, but you can also join via live stream, uh, caveat.nyc and for tickets. And also the link is in all my social bios at Jones Roy. And I, I have been to your live shows before. They are delightful. Well, thank They're you very absolutely much. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, thank That's you very right. much. Caveat. There we go. Yeah, but yeah. the last one didn't have circus in it, I don't think. It, no, the one, the one that saw. you saw didn't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've added that since as I get more desperate. So to can sell you tickets. demystify circus? <laughs> I should. You're demystifying data science. I should. Circus is what? 
circus is so that's like the trapeze and fire and i'm I'm trying to get them to let me set the theater on fire and are you happen. gonna do all that torture some I'm gonna animals do trapeze and uh and a, a lira which is an aerial hoop but i'm waiting for permission on the fire and stand and comedy <laughs> and comedy yeah I just want to see how this. You really get banged in the house down. I'm, I'm gonna come die. see the house. I'm yeah. like wildly out of shape because the problem is you do a circus act for three minutes and then you like can't breathe for ten minutes and that's when I have planned like to speak. So I got to figure it out. I'll bring a fire extinguisher. Stunt right. double. Yeah. Could, yeah. Go, yeah. Well, that's great idea. Could you, you don't have like so, certain double. musicians will like just dub. Could you do that? I'm not, I might do that. Yeah, yeah. just ha- have it play and then it'll be slightly out of sync. But people will think it's a bit. You'll be talking your mouth. You move your mouth, but dub my own stand up comedy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so come to see me figure out uh, how to do that. March 1st. Uh, yeah, March 1st. I've got no dates to plug. I have quit being funny publicly. Wow. Uh, maybe Congrats. maybe someday again I will be public funny. At, at the moment, I'm not. However, I do host The Political Orphanage and encourage people listening on your shows to come check out The Political Orphanage. I did a bunch of fun episodes recently. Uh, I did a special on psychedelics. Uh, I had on uh, my friend Sarah Siskin, who I think you're friends with as well. Sarah's great. Uh, who's, who's very, very funny and an expert on psychedelics. And then I had on Ayla, who is a... Uh, public intellectual and very high-end escort and cam girl who did LSD every week for about a year to talk to me about that experience. Nice. And then uh, prior to that, I did um, much, much less uh, um, sex and drugs related. <laughs> I had a two-part special on homelessness, on the causes of and solutions to it that, that I put a lot of research Are the solutions into. sex and drugs? They, yes, exactly. I was going to say, don't sell the, the homeless. Do yeah. LSD yeah. Every, every day. The homeless people I She's know. She's not homeless. She's yeah. doing very well. So, ergo, the math is you have to do LSD every week for a year. That would, that would cure all homelessness, yes. Yeah. Andrew, oh. and plug your show. Yeah, I just realized I have a podcast called Majoring in Everything. I'm, I feel like yeah, I need to look at me? you all. Like, I didn't realize that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> podcast called Majoring in Actually, Everything, and you, it's for people who do lots of seemingly unrelated things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, Heaton's been on the show, and I'm slowly collecting yeah. She's trying to people. figure out a reason to have us on early. Waiting week. on my invite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We're coming. Sweeps week. You're coming in Hold us for sweeps. Yeah. Season two. But Lost Americans, head on over and check out both these podcasts. Yes. If you haven't already. Hey everyone, AJR here interrupting my own podcast, good for me, to share some exciting news. As you may know, I'm a data science professor among some other things, which is part of why I do this show. And I teach college students and corporate clients how to do data science. And one thing that's made me really mad over the years is that whenever I tell other people that I teach data science and they are not already involved in data science, they freak out and they say, oh, data science, I could never do data science. I can't possibly. And that's so sad to me because everyone can get involved in data science. It's super fun. It's interesting. And we need your wisdom in data science. I promise. So I am putting on a show called The Data Science Spectacular. It's on Tuesday, March 1st at 7 p.m. It's at Caveat Theater in New York City. You can go to www.caveat.nyc for tickets, or you can go to my Instagram or Twitter at Jonesroy, J-O-N-E-S-R-O-O-Y, for links to get tickets. And it is in person, and it's live stream, so you can watch in any form that you want. And I think the live stream tickets give you access to the show for a few days, so even if you can't make that time, check it out. And come join me in the wild world of data science. Oh, there's going to be comedy and circus as well. See you there. All right. Um, I think... Can I? You want me go to go first? Actually, can, I, can I just... My, my voice is going to crap out as we're talking, so I, I apologize for, for anybody you. at home if I sound raspier than usual. You. I have been singing the last three nights. Show tunes. Singing show I tunes. Singing Junkin show, show tunes. tunes the last three... I also was rather drunk last night, it being Valentine's Day, uh, and so had a great time. But but also I can hear my voice. It so is it, why you came to New York, correct? It is why I came it, to just New to York. sing show tunes. I so. did not think I would have a date lined up for Valentine's Day, <laughs> and I thought I can either stay home and look at actuarial actuarial tables about whether or not I'm going to die alone, or <laughs> I can come to New York and sing show tunes and have a great time. But I had a great time. I didn't he, realize he's single three ladies. Nights in a row. I love Maurice Crisis. It's a wonderful bar. And if you go there on Sundays, there's not a lot of people there, so you can <laughs> like request the- all the baritone stuff that they don't normally play, like Don Quixote. Right. So, uh, Man yeah. Of the yeah. <laughs> all right. We're in the middle of the Olympics here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, football season's over. We're now, only so now. Eight, no, eight minutes into this episode. Let's start it out. Um, all right. So I'm going to go for it. The Olympics are happening, and um, depending upon when this, when this comes out, but. 
Th- they're they're still happening. happening for our show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there, it, it comes, there, a question comes up every year, every four years or two years or however often they do this, that is it worth it? It's four. <laughs> is it worth it for these countries to do, to do the Olympics? Now, the, the, you lose billions of dollars right. by doing this. You build all these stadiums that you use once and never again. Right. Uh, it, it routinely bankrupts the cities that, that put them in, right? Routinely, or, or, yes. And creates Almost like, always. whole areas where no one goes because it was all just empty stadiums right. and concrete. Like Potemkin <laughs> stadiums. Yes. Well, because they don't have another use for it. That's the issue. There's another Olympics. And um, now compounding that problem is this idea that no one watches the Olympics anymore. Right. Is anyone? I mean, like, well, the, white women watch the Olympics. Let's get that out of the way. Let's stick, <laughs> sticking to numbers. <laughs> it's record low. Yeah. Every single Olympics is like, like the lowest ever was 2018 Winter Olympics, hmm. and this so far we're 40 percent lower than the lowest ever. Really? How are the In Summer Olympics doing? I don't think they did very well. Okay, the the, the, the um, Japan ones. Well, they have to stop right. having them in places that aren't on our time zone. It really affects our... Well, that's you know who's left out is the West. No, no, no. That's yeah. another big caveat. All these numbers are America only. Yeah. The, the Olympics could be gigantic in Botswana right now. They should right, have it on our know? time zone, so but I don't care what time it is there. To finish, um, America matters more than everybody else because right. we're the, the, the economy... I would say like America and China are the countries that are spending the most... I'm sure like the paying the Olympic committee, it's, it's like how how many billions for NBC to get the rights to even show the Olympics? Right. Yeah. They have, they're paying the IOC for all this, right? The I international think so. Olympic I committee. So, yeah. So, and they're great stewards of money. The you IOC. could have every single person <laughs> in, um, in like Botswana watching the Olympics, but like, who cares? What's the, what's the TV rights to, mm. to show it there? So the question is, is this, and then if no one's watching, then it's not really like a marketing thing for your country. Because that's one argument, right? That it's yep. marketing. So the, the plus sides of having it are that it's you're marketing your country. This is yeah. good for like emerging countries. Like, like let, let's say we're a big country that occasionally does an ethnic clearing of the Uyghurs. Maybe it's a good idea if we're this particular anonymous country I'm thinking of that pushes Uyghurs around <laughs> to have a Uyghur sing a song at the beginning of the Olympics. So everybody thinks they're they're peachy keen, right? It could be a PR thing. So is this, this is a Mongolia this, story. It's, no, it's <laughs> China. I know. China is what I'm talking about. This is a good time to say that uh, uh, I have to go back to China <laughs> pretty often. <laughs> and my wife's button. from China. <laughs> And her whole family's still in China, so that will all be cut out. Fake news. Okay. Of our, our yeah. fake news. So the question <laughs> is... Um, so Shall I China, sing the Chinese national anthem now? Yes. Or do you want me to do it? <laughs> China's saying that um, it's still good for them. They love having the Olympics for number one is they use it to like employ people, mm-hmm. to build... They build a million trains when it's coming up. Fast and trains. All this stuff, fast trains. Oh, and then the, and then they also say that, so it's good employment. It's um, frankly like Xi Jinping's using it to show the world, like, hey, look at me, we're look what I can do, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and then they and then bizarrely, this is from the New York Times, China saying that it's winter sports are not popular in China, so that this is a way to show Chinese people what winter sports are available to then build consumer spending. To go <laughs> like, skiing It's somewhere. a lot Maybe of money to buy spend skis to get... and parkas. Yeah. Right. In well, the future. Isn't a so lot the... of it very flat? China? Yeah. China is uh, like... I, I looked at. Have you ever looked at a topo- topographical Topo- map topography. yeah. of China? So on the west coast, the, not coast, on the western side of China, it's very like mountainous, Every, and then it like comes down yeah, okay. all the way to the east. Okay. The question is, what countries would it make sense for to try to have the Olympics right. in the future? I don't think America makes sense of it. I, no. I, th- I think this is a, a, a pool situation. Is it better to have a pool in your backyard or to have a neighbor with a pool? It's better to have a neighbor with a pool. So I think, like, <laughs> go to good. other countries, let them bankrupt themselves. I also like... I, Canada. I, uh, Canada would be great. Canada, why don't you bankrupt yourself doing this? That sounds true. They already did. Uh, yeah. That, That's um, why the truckers are protesting now. Plus, <laughs> plus like, like it, I... I th- it, if you're if you're claiming that it's worth it for the the national ego boost and so on and so forth and there's psychic utility that's being derived, okay, I don't think the economics works out on this. Like like because I, I I know that the 
um, the, the Chinese plan involves, well, we're going to stimulate consumer economy by doing this. We're going to do lots of infrastructure spending. We're going to direct more economic activity to the northwestern part of, of China. I, I think those kind of Rube Goldberg schemes tend to fail and tend to be more inefficient in, in terms of resource allocation. You could argue that there's a multiplier effect from the infrastructure spending, but you can do that without the Olympics. There's nothing to stop you from just building roads whenever you want. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd say, uh, yeah, let's, let's try and trick Canada into doing it. That sounds terrific. Then it'll be in the right time zone, right? Has Mexico done one? They've had the summer Olympics, obviously. At the they, like, was it Mexico, or am I thinking eight? the World Cup? You might be thinking World Cup. I don't yeah. know. I feel like with the altitude, they definitely had the World Cup because that's where the wave started. Do you know that? Like in in the Europe in Europe, they call it the Mexican. Or no, that's the first wave. where Europeans first saw the wave. Like the, the, when audiences, yeah, when audiences fans. do the wave because the stupidest thing in Europeans <laughs> yeah. all call it the Mexican wave. And we're uh, like, oh, that's really like, what? That's and it started in America, but they first saw it at the World they Cup. They culturally season. appropriated it from us. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And now yeah. it's theirs. Mexico took it. Mexico's reaping our riches yet again. But do you know that originally the Olympics was not meant to be a nationalist thing? I, I don't mean like during ancient Greece, but I mean like when it got rebooted in 1854, it was going to be just individual participants going. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of became a like a sports version of team or of, of, of countries competing. Because that's they knew then that to go back to what I said earlier, white women would only want to watch. People are only interested in Olympics if it's their country's right. person. Right. Yeah. Like they want to watch that whole story of the Michaela the skier. They right. want to hear the whole thing where they're growing up. They're not interested if it's the same exact story, and she's from Mexico. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I think you're so probably every, right. And every country has their own version of that. And, so. and I, I think it's probably healthy too. Like I think that like um, I think tribalism's inbuilt to the human experience, yep. and the trick is to try and have it. Uh, excised from us in a benign or productive manner, right? So if you're going to have sublimated warfare, which is what s sports is at a national level, that's a good way to direct those Healthy. instincts away from World War III right. and into gymnast. Right. What about this idea? Into 14-year-old girls. Yes, into 14-year-old girls who, who will be our proxy gladiators. Yeah, who will abuse against their The role. other issue with this Olympics now with COVID is you can't look, no one's been at the last two Olympics. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so they're not thing. even getting tourists to come see their country anymore. Right. So, you know, the, like the uh, one thing they, they don't do this specifically with the Super Bowl, but they use it a lot of the time is they'll say like, okay, we'll do it in Miami and then we'll do it in San Diego and then we'll do it in Las Vegas. And then there's like four, yeah. why don't we pick four Th countries around the world that are vacation destinations and they rotate the right. Olympics. I mean, Turner must have looked at my notes because that's what I was going to say next. Oh, I was really? Gonna, I was going to say, we got to do it the way the, the real world does it, the great TV show or the Super Bowl. It's like, yeah. you pick the best spots, you build them up, you spend money on it once. And then every four and years, we every go four years The stadiums are always yeah. there. Yeah. So you can reuse the stadiums over and over. And it's a fun place to go. for. Yeah, you go like Ibiza, right? Like for <laughs> the Euros. Yeah. And you pick one in each market, right? So yeah. each continent. Because yeah. obviously we all know that if it's not on your time zone, the last, was it two at least? Have yeah. Not no, then you had Sochi. The Sochi hasn't been in this time zone in a long time. So it's like know. middle of the night for the U.S. No, no one cares. Or yeah. you have to watch the weird recaps that NBC does during prime time, which are just these sort of like hand-picked things. That yeah, you get like the 10 American minutes. Stories and and it it's something that happened 15 hours ago that you've right. already read on the internet. Right. The only people up yeah. are like cokeheads in like three in the morning who are up. Oh, it's live. Look at something on TV. Yeah, <laughs> I need like, to do more cocaine. How, how, how often do they change the games at the Olympics? Because that has all, like painting used to be an Olympic They keep sport. adding yeah. sports yeah. in the winter. This year's really fun, actually. There's lots, there's lots of crazy ski jumping yeah, see, now okay, it's like that, a whole that, that i'm interested in yeah. i mean like like tr like in the same way that people are going to have a nationalist bent people are kind of kind of want to see maybe that guy's going to get severely injured things That's that right. almost result in injury is going to be inherently interesting to people and i'd like say fire like, circus you could, you could also add right. some novelty to it and that i don't remember what the event is but it's wonderful there's some like jokey version of the olympics where it's like just who can slide the furthest on a kitchen floor in their socks who can like like dive off a diving board while doing like a dolphin type thing? And I'm like, I would totally watch that as a sport. You can like, imagine I, someone putting together something like a TikTok Olympics where everyone just does stupid crap yeah, at home and yeah, they yeah. all emulate it. I think a lot of people would die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, uh, <laughs> they can do that I mean, at the Olympics, like the week slides. before, is like a like a get ready. The fun for the Olympics. Olympics, the fun yeah. Olympics. Yeah. This, not special, but yeah. But the yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why don't they pick? All right, because we've already found out that like um, authoritarian leaders of countries enjoy the Olympics because right. it's good for their ego. Right. 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 So why not play into that and let's sign up Brazil for like the next 30 years. They get it every other or whatever. Once every, I guess if you right. have a summer, winter, then you have, they can do you both. have one every two years. Yeah. Right. So you give them one every eight years. Everybody you get, you pick four places and then you go like whatever, Spain, South of France, they get one every four years, maybe Canada. I've got a, I've got a really dumb question. 
why does it all have to be at the same location? Right. I mean, like, like, because p- people that are doing skiing aren't doing triathlon. Because they, well, stuff, the socializing they? normal they years. Bang in the, the Olympic yeah, village, people like to bang it? in the Olympic Village. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, oh no, no, no! It has to be because if you ever go uh, the opening the, ceremonies, I've been. Yeah. I went to the Beige- Beijing Olympics. Oh, you did? Oh, cool! It's unbelievably awesome. Okay. Yeah. Because you have everyone from the world on vacation in the same place at the same time. It's like a week or two weeks or however long you decide to stay. No one has anything to do except. Go see like, stuff during the day and then flood the bars and Yeah, it's like a film night. festival, but it's, way better. For yeah. the world. For the world. It's yeah. awesome. It's mm. great. Yeah. No, it should to definitely be. To put it in language you might understand, it's like if the Edinburgh Fringe Festival were huh? all over the world or something uh, like that. You see right, how that would yeah. actually be. It wouldn't, be as, fun. It it wouldn't be as fun, yeah. yeah it'd be sort yeah, of yeah, like yeah. what we have now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but he raised a good point because right now it's like it's almost like tax abatements in like bad parts of the world like cities. Like Detroit will like give you big tax credits to build up the shitty area downtown, mm-hmm. and then like ten years later, it's still shitty, right? Yeah. So right. that's what's happening now, and I think you, you we should move on from well, that. I think I would. So we're saying Brazil. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I would hasten away from overcorrecting based on the last two, just because you're right that COVID has done weird stuff to all of this, and maybe we all would be more interested in the Olympics if more of us were going, or we knew, uh, you know, there was more fanfare around it, and so I wouldn't necessarily change all our plans based on the two. Bad so ones. you think COVID's going away? <laughs> I mean, the pandemic's been over for years. Let's just have it in Florida. Yeah. No, let, it's a yeah. hoax. So, yeah. Yeah. If what we're in America, would we have it? If we had to have one, like I Los Angeles, Florida, Florida, Florida I Miami. Miami. I have an idea. I've got an idea. Okay, this is a good idea. Right. So p- part of the problem is we're spending all these money building stadiums. We ought to have a one-use stadium, right? Like this. Come, yeah. what you're talking about, Turner. So we're going to form a new country. It's the permanent host. Also, it will be privately owned. Mm. <laughs> Basically, see static with a stadium. Olympics. It's, it's just a country. It Olympia. Just no, no, Olympia. No, we'll get an island tra- called Olympia. And it'll there. be a, a permanent new country that hosts all of the Olympic That's Games. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think it'd That's be fun. Great. Or we could a ask super, like, an island of super you, fit people. Only. Where would you put it? Uh, Israel or Palestine? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've said for a long time, I think the problem in Israel is there's not enough ethnic groups. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would put it I'd put it in between. The West Bank. We should be an island between. We will make it the wall. The wall itself will be four miles. Yeah. Uh, right. That's right. the summer Olympic Olympics. village. Yeah. I like it. Olympia. All right, so it's either it's final conclusion. Either it's a new country, yeah. or it's four places. It's, or, as long as it's not New York City, because they were going to do that once, and it's, no, the Olympic Village is actually where I live right now. The place where Mike Bloomberg was planning to put the housing, oh, wow. and everyone said that's crazy. That became. Long oh, you I, hold on. Now I'm thinking <laughs> if we did the new country though. That would be the fittest country on earth, and America would slide down one more peg. So I don't know. That well, who would live really there between? Only Olympians you wouldn't can be live there. Well, they would live there. Oh, no, when you, when you point, retire, right. still be you the, become like a groundskeeper. You get citizenship. <laughs> you get citizenship. You can live there forever. Oh, I love that. You, you Carl have, Lewis is like tending bar to, somewhere. You have to get a medal to get citizenship. You have to get a you medal. To be a you medal win winner. your way into citizenship. Only I like the true top athletes get to run the Oh, my God. Now it's a survival of the fittest. You have people from like war torn If you're a refugee, you get to be a citizen somewhere. Beat out by an American who doesn't give a shit right. about the citizenship. I think this is just the Hunger Games. I well, think that's like, what we've done. You know when Cubans Man, would come over to play baseball? Dark real yeah. quick. Well, Cubans would sometimes, you know, they would leave the team when they're playing baseball and they, like, on... Mm. Yeah, defect. Yeah, defect. This could be a new thing if you're on the team and that, that, that's a whole new... All right. All right. I, I All right. like this. Story. Great I'm idea, story. guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about something that's way more important. I want to talk about the royal family. Okay. Oh, yes. All right. And I want to talk about <laughs> some news coming out about the royal family that Charles and Camilla are planning their coronation. Now, I don't believe that as of this recording, Queen Elizabeth has died, and I don't really know what the etiquette is around planning a coronation before somebody dies, but apparently she has signed off on Camilla getting like some very fancy queen-like, if not actual queen crown, queen regent or queen something. Can we start backwards a little bit? Is Camilla, is that Charles' wife? Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Don't know any. (laughs) Got to start with the basics of it. I didn't watch... Cornwall, right. I think. Yes. And she, I mean, I didn't know her story until I saw the historical documentary, The Crown, Okay, thanks should, to the pandemic. I should and, be watching that. Uh, I find that their story, you know, Camilla was very hated for a long time uh, because everyone loved Diana, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's rather nice that Charles and Camilla have found each other. And I think well, I'm born to death. Already, all three of you. Wife. No, 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 no. Right. That's right. Well, he was already that married. That's, that's right. <laughs> but he, always, he that was always the one he had a flame for, right? Well, exactly. And then, and then so his it's... uncle, the Lord Lord Mount 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 Batten, Batten. Mount Batten like yeah. pushed him into marrying Diana because right. they needed the bloodline. She know was what. good right. for ratings. They knew. White women really loved her. Right. But it turns out he always really liked her. Yeah. So I think it's actually a really happy story. Is that they, you know, they both they have kids from separate people. They both married other people, and then they came together later in life. They're multi multi family family, just like us. They're just regular people. We could blame them for. Diana's death, but we don't need to go into that. Mm. Mm. One, Statue um, limitations. yeah. 
one, I, I think she killed Diana. Okay. <laughs> and two, isn't she a redhead? No, I don't Camilla? believe. I, think, I believe yeah. she's a blonde. I, don't think so. I know she's a red blonde. Head. You're thinking of Fergie. Fergie. Who's that? I am she's thinking of the <laughs> Dutch. Is she from Prince, the Black Eyed Peas? Prince <laughs> Andrew's former wife, I believe. Prince, Prince Andrew. Andrew. Uh, wait, what about his coronation? Yeah. Is, <laughs> where is he on the coronation Man, like, chart? Get like well, a, how like far a down Ralph the ref? So how far down is he? How many people have to die? A lot of people. I will say people have to die. That the news today, the news today that came out about Charles and Camilla happened to coincidentally come out with the same at the same time as a news alert about Prince Andrew settling this lawsuit as well. And so Good imagine... The lawsuit means he's innocent. <laughs> yeah, he yes, settle. yeah. So it's almost as though the royal family is trying to distract by mm, putting out uh, other news. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Wait, like, Epstein Island could be the Olympic Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's empty now, right? Nice. That's well, St. James. A, yes. That's what, really what, good idea. what one thing could redeem the Hunger Games we decided earlier? Let's put it on a sex perverts billionaire's island. I'm, I'm sure like it was a... I'm sure it had great facilities. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure he... Everyone had a stage shape there. Yeah, great, At least great, the women. Great. Awesome money to like anti-youth trafficking. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll bring other Bill, trouble Bill to youth to be training. Cut the ribbon on the first yeah. one up in here before. There we go. And they should give immediate citizenship to anyone who's been there before, like Chelsea Handler and Bill Clinton. <laughs> Dershowitz. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dershowitz. Yeah. Forced citizenship. Alan you lose Dershowitz. your U.S. passport. <laughs> He's well, so so ba there. back yeah. to the royal family. <laughs> right. Is the is the kind of the onus of the topic um, that. We are just we're happy for Charles and Camilla well, so, or so part of the honest of the topic is that I'm uh, decided that I'm happy for Charles and Camilla. Okay. But I also wanted to hear what you all think about having a royal family in particular. Heaton, having mm. lived over there, I feel like you must have views on this. I, I he do. Is Scottish, right? Uh, I'm, I'm I am ethnically just a jar of mayonnaise. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 a storm. I'm uh, I'm, I'm English, Scottish, German and then a, a bunch of little tiny bits. Because um, there's I like, like mayonnaise with black pepper. In. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was telling you, there's a show that my wife was just binging on Netflix about someone who pretends to be a German heiress and uh -huh. cons everybody. Oh, you could totally, yeah. yeah. Oh, I you could, could totally off. con everybody yeah. and pretend to be like a Scottish. No, no, heir. I, could, well, I, could, you, I can do the voice. You could do it. It might yeah. be happening. <laughs> it um, might be it. <laughs> if this is what I'm trying to con people into, of like yeah. I am we a mid-level comedian and podcast host, and that's the wool I'm pulling. I need to set my my targets higher. Um, so I I am um very pro ceremonial monarchy. So okay. to, to, um, to make a clarification and uh, people that are, are long time listeners in my show have heard the stump speech here before I apologize, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, I am not for monarchy in the sense of hereditary despots. I'm mm. very much opposed to that in, in the sense of the monarchs that we once fought against in the British and in, in the Revolutionary War and, and in Europe during the revolutions and right now in the Middle East as we are uh, allies with Saudi Arabia, which is a hereditary despotism of feudalism and theocracy. Horrible stuff, don't like that. Ceremonial monarchs, I think, are a great idea. Because my thing is, I think we're always going to have some kind of reverent alpha chief worship that right. seems to be innate to the human condition. And Americans have found a way, JFK, Obama, we And it's Kardashian. really bad. I think reality it's really, shows, really bad. Yeah. So, so like, it's the like, ultimate reality show. What, 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 what we did, one, one of the most brilliant things that America did is a gift to the world is separating church and state. That We were the first country to institute that that I'm aware of, maybe Geneva or something, but like we did that writ large, brilliant. Separating church and state, brilliant. What Britain stumbled into, they didn't plan this, but what they stumbled into was separating power from reverence. Mm. The queen reigns, the prime minister rules, the prime minister governs, right? And if you go over there, people will relentlessly make fun of the prime minister, which right. I think is very healthy. I think that you should view public servants as servants. I don't think you should view them as the father of the nation or uh, the high priest or the chief or anything like that. They're just, they're the top bureaucrat and you should kick them around and scrutinize them. And they do that over there, even if they're in the same party. No one ever likes the prime minister. No one ever worships the prime minister. They really like the queen, but she can't send anybody off to die. Right. So I, I would love to have, like, I was, for years, I was a proponent of making Betty White queen of America. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And put put her on the stand. Well, it's, like, it's like a state sponsored so, uh, uh, well, reality here's, show. Here's basically. my question: Is and I'm wondering what what all of you think of it. Is why I don't know why I care about the British royal family. I find them to be a curious. Kaplan knows why you care. Curious, <laughs> like, <laughs> like curious. I follow them. I saw the, it trending on Twitter. I immediately clicked on all the things I read about how they're going to put Kate and William and their kids on the on the 
patio or whatever balcony that they're on. And I was like, that's great for them. Like, and I was like, why do I care about this? And I agree with you about the ceremonial part. And I can see why having that reverence would be nice. But I also feel like if we were doing it in the U.S. and channeling a bunch of money, channeling a bunch of money to Betty White or to anyone, I'd be super mad. Hmm. So it's sort of like the Canada hosting the Olympics where sure. I'm glad they exist because it's fun for me to observe. But if my tax dollars were going, I'm getting so conservative. If my tax yeah. dollars were going yeah, yeah. to support them, I'd be super mad. And you're Whoa. still into it. Did you hear from Meghan Markle that they might be racist? The royal family? Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst part. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that the royal family could be racist. Can you imagine? This is, this the royal is family where, of the UK? I'm just going to get straight <laughs> well, up Tory now. That's bullshit. Here's Ma- a question. Meghan Markle All went right. on a... Oh. Uh, for an- uh, Dr. Andrea. There we go. Uh, what do you think of Meghan Markle? I think she seems fine. Hey. I did have some conversations <laughs> hey, with some wealthy Grifter. white British people when I was on my mystery rich island that and was not husband. the Epstein no, Island. You were, you were looking at other yeah. islands. Yeah. Pups, Where they things. were like, wow, no one in England likes her. And I don't know if that's because maybe there is something to all the stories that say that she's kind of a jerk or if that's mm. just a sign of further racism. So well, I feel I don't have enough information. Oh, to I, I, would, I would like oh, to go on my oh. Tory screed now go uh, on because it. I, be, I become a Tory the moment I set foot. I feel like the classic story of a wife stand down. <laughs> and and uh, uh, getting married and then pulling the husband out of the family like that kind of rubs me like the raises some alarm bells even though the family is obviously Let me just add something here. I'm like. gonna get canceled. Go ahead. Um, no, you're not. You're on the side of the canceling people. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the problem with her and her husband is that um, Megan and Megan and Harry. Harry. Harry, the hostage. Yeah, Prince Harry. No, no, no. no. I think they're you. both equally uh, detestable. Agreed. People. Only because maybe not detestable. That could be wrong. I, I think that they're uh, they're useless. They haven't yeah. done anything. Yeah. What if they, she was on Suits? It was like a USA show and a commercial. Who even gets USA? Right. <laughs> I, I, I used to get it in Shanghai. I don't know I, if I get USA. So she, my she's huge in China. She's done that. She's like show. a low level act, middle, middling actress. Uh, low level. Right? I wouldn't call yeah. it mid level. Yeah. And and he's nothing. He's right. born into the right family. And they got, um, was it $30 million? Netflix from deal. Spotify? Right. Netflix deal, too. And Spotify Netflix will Oprah. not pay comedians for the jokes they write yeah. currently, but they will pay them $30 million to uh, produce, and I have ex- I have quotation marks uh, if you're listening right yeah. now, produce podcasts. Whoa. We Maybe are they all can, producing Why can they produce us? Right well, now. And you want to know. <laughs> and wait, last thing yep. is that we all know, and everyone on earth knows by this point, podcasting is not based off of if you're a celebrity or not. Yeah, it's The talent. biggest podcaster in the world is Joe Rogan. He was just some guy on a 90s sitcom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he wasn't even the lead. He was like the sixth person, but he, interesting is what podcasts are based on. Right. So anyway, spot, if they're great people, they should take that $30 million and redistribute it to all these comedians. Uh, but, but they That's can't. You can't. They, they, they've been cut off by the royal family. This was this was a big it's source like of contention. Throw up they, in my they, mouth. They were. Are they totally they, they, cut off though? They don't have any. They, they, this is what they did. Trust cut off. They, they're adults. They, they, we're all cut off. They, yeah, exactly. Every adult. My parents they, cut me off. Capra, they, they made <laughs> an, they made an I, I've announcement. got podiatry at Harry. They, they made an announcement <laughs> that they were not going to be doing their royal duties anymore. Right. Right. They were they were withdrawing from the family. Then three months later, went on Oprah to talk about how the royal family cut their allowance off. And the racist, and, which is the biggest shocker and, of oh, all. The, and that other thing, too, uh, the, the racist thing, she's like, well, like, you know, my son, they're not calling him prince because he's black. And it's like, no, because he's not a prince in the line of succession. It's the same for Saint, or for uh, Prince Andrew's son. Right. I mean, you fucking looked into this. There's no way you married a prince and didn't look into this or not. You're absolutely lying Wait, and trying to drum up support. Wait, I have a different point of view. Well, she might be lying. She also might be the dumbest person on earth to not know going in that the royal family Possible. was racist. She's never watched idiot. Jeopardy. She doesn't know all the different. Like, I never know. You do you know the answers to like Edward the Fifth and all these different people, yeah. all these numbers. I don't know any. I don't know how well, people she keep did track say of that. Something once where she was like, I didn't really do much research going into this. Yeah, and it's like that's, you could, I Google don't buy that. She doesn't I, know. I don't think on. anybody that grows up in America or Canada who marries a prince doesn't do a little bit of Wikipedia reading. Right. I'm fairly this, confident. Oh, you always look into the person you're marrying's family. Yeah. Tree, also, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It all seems rather. Fun. Everyone hires a private investigator. Yeah. It, right? I, if, if I were marrying uh, a to. princess, I think at some point I'd be like, "By the way, is my kid going to be a prince?" I would ask an yeah, attorney yeah. or something. I wouldn't go, "Well, if you don't make him a prince, I'll call you." You don't just reasons. assume right. your kid's going to be all a right. prince. Anyway, all right. Final statement is good for them. Good for uh, what's her name? Ginger. Or Camilla. Or Camilla. Camilla. <laughs> so she's our next ruler. She'll be queen, or she won't be. Queen. Well, there's a weird thing where I if you're if you're the queen. Your husband doesn't become king, but if right. you're the king, 
your yeah. your wife is eligible for some So is that reverse? Consort. Like I don't know that it's automatic, which is why it was. Is a that women's rights? Queen said it was like that's suffrage. Sure. That's, <laughs> that's what they marched for. <laughs> right. So, so <laughs> in America, Queen, Queen Elizabeth did not. She she Prince married. Prince Philip was never. A king. She married Prince Philip, right. and she never made him king because right. she he he would have been ruler. Because he'd be her ruler. Right. The yes. one thing uh, we're kind of glossing over on this story, sure. and why my mom and all her friends hate Camilla, oh, is because. Uh, Cause he didn't he have sex with her on the day of his wedding? Something like that. Whoa. Yeah. I don't know about the that. Day of his wedding to Diana? Yeah. Or is it her? Oh, okay. to Diana. <laughs> I didn't realize it was on the day. That's... According to Myrna Sparks, it was okay. The day. All right. On yeah. the day. We'll have to get Myrna on. He the was show. just and also she like, could be our correspondent cheating on his wife through the entire right. thing. Right. Yeah. And he cut Diana's brakes. Well, she even had <laughs> <He> that. <laughs> <laughs> cut her brakes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And with that. <laughs> Well, oh, and right. and it turns Literally. out his family's a racist. Right. We're, right. That's the worst sin of all. So so <laughs> on on that note, my story today has to do with race, but Here it doesn't it doesn't have to do with the royal family. It has to do with Whoopi Goldberg. Have you oh. all been following this? So for, yes. for, for, favorite for my favorite Jewish comedian, for, for, for your favorite Jewish comedian. So Goldberg. for anybody that, that's unfamiliar Jewish. with this, to, to give you, yeah, my favorite Jewish. I was like, who's saying it? In, in, in a, an abbreviated uh, uh, version of the story, is she went on Colbert and went on The View and sort of. Uh, be- began this process and then made it worse by claiming that the Holocaust was not about race. Yes. And hot the, take. The, the, reason, <laughs> the, the hottest. The, that is so hot. The reason that she was claiming that the Holocaust was not about race was, in Whoopi Goldberg's mind, uh, white people are a race. Jews are white. They are so it's white on white crime. Therefore, yes. couldn't be racism. It has to be ideological. And, Finally, and, somebody said it. And, and <laughs> if you if you listen to her, it's like I I do actually feel a a, a, a some sympathy for if if you're talking for a living all the time, you're going to put. Oh your yeah, foot she's a blowhard. She's a blowhard. She's yeah. just yeah. not a bright blowhard. Uh, and and I I think what she was she was basically saying everybody this, people were being horrible to other people. So there there it's not as if she was saying she was a Holocaust denier. But nonetheless, it angered a lot of people because she was claiming that the Holocaust was not primarily about race, <laughs> whereas most people would say Hitler, <laughs> pretty straight up bigot. I'm yeah, pretty sure had, the words Aryan race are. Yeah, and they had the Nuremberg here. law, the rules of right. uh, you know each the race laws basically. Yeah, right. was, so what, first thing he did. Whoopi Goldberg saying Hitler was not a racist was not on my bingo card. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that she. I don't know that she said Hitler wasn't a race, racist. She just said that the Holocaust wasn't man, about race. Really. She, got, she said he was evil, not racist. But she said there's did good she, people on both she, sides. Said, no. What? Uh, she said it was about evil and hate. It she said it was about man's hatred for other man. That's what she said. Yeah, as if like it was two different people. Kaplan. I feel like you need to explain this As a to Jew? the rest of us. Yeah, speak on behalf of all Jews. Because is, I thought Judaism, <laughs> I'm going to keep talking, was an ethnicity, and that was the whole... It's a confusing thing, right. because... Explains yeah. on what country club you go to. Uh. Well, it's like, if you, if you if I convert to Christianity, okay. now I'm still considered Jewish, though, uh-huh. by the people who... Yeah, you know, nice like, Hitler, You know what I mean? Like, nice <laughs> try, Hitler. exactly. Well, sorry, if it's, it's an ethnic group <laughs> and a religion the and a culture. The new rule is, would Hitler consider you Jewish? <laughs> I mean, you don't... In most things, I guess you don't go with the worst person's interpretation of the laws, but I think in this case, you have to go with the worst person's interpretation. Because he was hunting and because he was literally, right, he right. said that Jews are an inferior race and that they should be wiped off the face of the earth. I mean, again, he's... I, so, I, I took a 23 and me test a couple of years ago. My, yeah. my dad you, and I are both part Ashkenazi Jew. Oh, uh, welcome. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I would, I Give would, me the secret handshake. True, I, 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 truly, I would love to claim it. Uh, but, but because mom's not Jewish under Jewish law, I'm not, oh, right? right. Uh, but, right. I, but I mentioned this to my friend Gene Epstein, and he, he just went, good enough for Hitler. Yeah, if you're one-eighth. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. If you're one-eighth yeah, Hitler, that, that, they would track you down if you're one-eighth. So I, I, I'm not one-eighth. I, I, I suppose I would still be able to skirt you through. You might be able to skirt through to yeah. the end. So one-sixteenth. One-sixteenth. Well, they would have eventually got I mean, to eventually Yeah, eventually when they'd run out of everybody They were pragmatic. They had to start with But But what I find interesting about all of this is that the the reason that Whoopi went on this this odd tangent is her and, and she is using a very American way of looking at race, yes, which right. is that's exactly. a, a kind of binary. There are white people and there are black people. This makes sense historically, given our history with with slavery in makes America. Sense. It makes sense. But yeah. let's remember race is bullshit. It's well, we, not real. There's no such thing as race. It's right. just it's a, a social construct. A hundred percent. Huh? Wait, we should also say, because you're right, it does make sense for America, but we should also say that the Holocaust didn't happen in America. Right. No, <laughs> so, so we need to explain it to the audience. Well, <laughs> he's an American Holocaust sure. denier. Right. Well, and, and this is this is story. And, and, and I, I think <laughs> that the, in the, Europe. The, the destruct. So, so right. I see a good well, thing and a, a destructive thing people. lurking in this worldview. The destructive thing is it's never good to believe in any type of race essentialism. The idea that there's something inherent to a race of people, I think, is incredibly destructive, or the idea that. Uh, people have uh, th- th- there's there's something truly like integrally mythical mm. about your race because again it is nonsense it's made just up. it's straight up yeah. made up I mean we're great with money but we don't bl- we don't actually say that so. <laughs> 
I but, mean, but, someone as smart as your yeah. people, surely. Uh, you know, uh, I would say like like uh, uh, Jews have a, a a very high education rate and yeah. and, and tend to, to do well uh, financially compared to the rest of the population. That's cultural, right? It's not race. It is culture. Yes, it's, it's, I believe. It's, you know, it's, in, it's, in the same yeah. way that like Swedish Americans have a different thing they're dealing with, but it's cultural. Mm -hmm. they're what, are they with? what are they dealing they're, with? They, they, they also <laughs> tend to do pretty well. <laughs> but, but again, it's not because they've got Swedish blood in them. It's right. because of whatever their habits are and those kind of the things. Swedish Americans. But the, but the, the, the part with. that I like about Whoopi Goldberg is this. I like, I found out, I didn't know this, Whoopi Goldberg has her stage name's Goldberg because yes. she just kind of announced, oh. well, my, my mom said I was that we were part Jewish when I was a kid. I, I identify as a Jew, even though to my knowledge, she's not. I don't think it's even synagogue. accurate. She just, yeah. She li literally, I mean, she Elizabeth warned it. Yeah. Where, where somebody went, eh, somewhere in our family, I guess a Jew maybe. And I kind of okay. dig that though, because I think, <laughs> because <laughs> I think race is bullshit. <laughs> I, I, like, Sorry, I like people. <laughs> <laughs> We had, a, we had a Jewess at our family. Yeah. Uh, I, I, oh. I, like, I like doing that because I would like for people to kind of Rachel uh, Dolezal all this because it undermines right. that conceit. Is she the one who pretended to Yeah, you got to explain these references. Yeah, yeah. Our Ra Rachel Dolezal, about six years ago, More had, had like just been living life as, as a, a black, black woman. woman, had like tanned, done her hair, was a member of the uh, NAACP. And she was like high up on the all other, right? She was like yeah. a leadership. Yeah. Was she a professor it, 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 or something? Turns yeah. out that her name was like um, Amanda Dinkers or something. Right. And, and she, she was like a ginger and everything. Fine bird. But I, but I kind of like that stuff though, because again, since races aren't real, yeah. I, I like people that are delegitimizing the conceit of it. And I think Whoopi Goldberg's actually doing that by apparently making it up. Can I say something about this race not being real part? Yeah. Just we, to we clarify all agree what on we that? mean on this. I think yeah. race is real. So I think what we're talking about is what we've well, done as humans, you... he, correct me if I'm wrong. So, so social, saying something is a social construct gets everyone all wound up. What it means is that we've taken a, really wound up here. a continuous variable and turned it into discrete. So if we take people and we look at their skin color or the shape of their faces or whatever else, there are some natural, not natural, some, some maybe buckets that we could put someone in and say, these people are mostly look black. These people look Asian. These people look buckets. not buckets. But okay. Uh, these <laughs> people look Hitler. white, but if you actually put everyone together, it's a spectrum and there's no hard and fast line. Yeah, between, like, how is someone biracial or do we there, categorize there's, them there's as more black variation white? within a quote unquote race than there are between and them. What, what, what there is, there, there's, let's say like 40 different phenotypical traits. Our culture went, well, we're going to go with melanin. Yeah. Uh, 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 skin skin color, right? But you you could go by could height, do, I, you could yeah. go by by shape of the face, you could go by eye. Color. There's all these different things. We we did it mostly to to entrench there's a power no structure. There's no such thing as racism. The same thing as there's no such thing inherent in like countries. But we've sat down and drawn yes. the lines. They're yes. human constructed this divisions. Okay. But we've all. I, I now I get what you guys are talking yeah. about. But you do agree that there is there are races, right? Are you saying that there are there's a classification yes. called races? The, 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 there is a category we made up that yeah. classifies people. Yeah. Based on a clump of traits that we've drawn something right. around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we, we but the world operates with the world. The, the world right. operates and that way. And we do those okay. with gender. We do those with all um, kinds of stuff. But, Generations, but yeah, right? My, Gen my, my, my main point, though, is it's not like when, when you like if you take a twenty three and Me test. What the twenty three and Me test really said is that there are certain alleles that are. Uh, that that are more proliferate with certain groups of people and migratory things, and I inherited some of those alleles. I'm not uh, an actual percent Jewish in the same way that like. Uh, well, I got 100 percent Ashkenazi Jewish. I'm yeah, like, but, but, but very, but, but, but very again, exciting. But, but, but like truly, <laughs> genetically though, through that. <laughs> genetically <laughs> though, to be, to be, we're 99.9. We're, 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 we're both 100 percent human. That's uh, true. But we have certain alleles that are are correlated <laughs> with but migratory Whoopi patterns. But Whoopi wasn't past. doing this with all your thinking. No, no. I doubt she's it. Just an idiot. Whoopi well, was she, just saying what color was their skin. Well, she has a very like. Most people, it's like popular now to say like I don't see color, right? Right. What Whoopi's saying is I only see color. Well, I yeah. think a lot of people. Yes. I oh, think an American thing. left that's the only thing, thing that matters to me yeah. is what color. But you I are. think that you're stumbling up like on the people on the left. A lot of people now do just like everything becomes about color. Yeah, and that's right. her, it's very American centric, I think too. Right. So like throughout history, you're people talking about Israel. Oh, well, exactly. Well, throughout history, people have hated other people, right? I like disagree. they just. People have not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you I mentioned this on Twitter yesterday on Valentine's Day in like the 1300s in France. They killed thousands of Jews one day because they blamed us for the plague. Saint Valentine. Saint Valentine. Saint Valentine, Saint Valentine hated us. And that's why we, we don't like. Well, we did have it, but you know, you shouldn't have killed. It Should was I one not guy. have wished you a happy Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I try to get out. I give my wife flowers, but yeah. I'd already it's it's, smart. It's, it's really yeah. smart. Yeah. So yeah. the point is, people have hated Jews forever. They've considered them a separate entity forever. Right. And there's other, other plenty of other races too that have been discriminate against whatever word you want to use so like but then we get killed to like, is a word anyway killed yes pogroms uh you know but then we get to this modern america where it's just everything's black and white mm -hmm. and then you they're like you can't 
Like, how would you see like Rwanda in that? Right. Or, or, or like, how would you see like any or Israel too? Or, or yes. Like, like uh, Barack okay. Obama, who's like mm-hmm. like Barack Obama's mom is a white woman from Kansas. Like, he's actually right. more percent white than black. Right. Mm. And and the blacks from Kenya. Yeah. Like, he's not he's not descended. Amer- from it's slaves. not American black. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I have a professor at Michigan who, who, when he was first elected, he was like, right, Obama is not black in the sense of like a member of the black community. Mm. And when like, <laughs> this was a black man who said, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. No, no. And Andrew Jones very, Roy I'm says, not gonna, like pretend to, to, that's our clip. What, what, one of my friends, <laughs> that's the clip. But yeah, <laughs> Dr. Roy says Obama is not black. What, 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 I'll what, zoom in on my face. What, one, what of my friends so at DC had a joke about that of going like, right. But like, like, you're never going to have like a white guy out of a trailer park become president either. Like, you're not like, yeah. he's not really white. Cause he didn't go to a trailer party. Like you're never going to, yeah. Right, anyway. right, right, yeah. yeah. You're going to come for that too. But, but yeah, and that's the whole thing. Like, you, you, they see like Jews as like as as white people, basically, like just power people. Well, and, so, and, and do see, you this consider is... yourself white? Well, when we fill out these surveys, depends on what country club. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In exactly. The Plenty club? of country club. <laughs> Friars club. It's a good thing. Plenty of country clubs are not. But yeah, whenever we fill out paperwork, there's never a spot for Jew. Right. So he's white. Yeah. Yeah, well, but I always we, click other because, though. I like to click other to be difficult be, 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 mm, because <laughs> it's, it's not nearly as fixed as Data people, people think others. it is. Like mm-hmm. like the term white. This is a thing where white used to in America mean Anglo-Saxon and preferably Protestant. Exactly. We're not French, me. Germans, and English in here, but even Germans maybe not. If right. like there was a distinct whether well, there's there's not Italian. Like Germans, Italians weren't and there's white. High no, country yeah. Germans and the yeah. high country. There's swarthy people and <laughs> Italians weren't white. Yeah. If you if you go to England, but the term black means killer. different than it does over here. At least it used to. Like like black in, in England a few years ago meant Indian as opposed to African, and uh, and yeah like like right. Jews were not considered white, and then then they became white. Same with Irish. I, Irish were not considered white Cause, again because it's a bullshit term. It right. doesn't. It's not. Real. Well, and in the U.S., we also make the distinction, like on the census and other things, between race and ethnicity. And apparently, uh, Anya Taylor Joy, I read this last night, got in big trouble because she was described as a Latina, and she's like the blonde person from Queens Gambit. And it turns out she does have some Latin origin, Wait, but football. she's super white, and you can be white Kaplan and Latina and I because have it's been an ethnicity. railing against this loophole for years. Yeah, all right. these like white um, Central Americans, South Mexicans, yeah. right? But they are. Descendants of the Spanish, yeah, like our Argentinians are like straight up who European. came. They were conquerors. D- they conquered the same thing the, that Columbus the, did. The Mayans yeah. or the Incans. <laughs> they're or us, the but in the south, yeah. they're southern. But then they come to America, and yeah. then they're like Latino. Know, speaking whatever. specifically of comedians, yeah, I know white comedians yeah. from Central America who are like, "Oh, it's so hard being a person of color." I'm like, "What color? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look as white as I do." Well, then, that's Daniel white, Paravan. That's white fine. is all the colors. Daniel <laughs> well, Paravan. That's, that, I think the interesting inverse that's happening right now is that, like a hundred years ago, you really wanted to be white because there was a, a, an entrenched racist power structure, and you wanted to yeah. be into that. Yeah. But now, culturally, particularly uh, uh, among more more left wing areas, yeah. uh, there is a hierarchy of victimhood, and your yeah. your moral certitude and moral authority are derived from victimhood. So the more things you can stack on there, the more moral authority you have. It's got to be the case that I'm going to really get canceled now. Uh, it's got to be the case that people who are white passing but can claim some kind of POC status have like won in the 2020 race loophole. <laughs> right. The, the, the like, Venn like diagram being able perfect to say other. Well, yeah. that's but what, you don't have to deal with all the crap walking around. Yeah, but ironically, in like 19, like 20 Germany, like the German Jews thought that that's exactly how they felt. That's why wow. they, that's why they didn't leave. They thought of themselves as German. Mm. They thought that this was like they were Germany was like America. Then. I you fought know? in World War One. I. I fought in the I'm, war. I'm, I'm German. German. I'm Western. German. I'm not religious. Like yeah. the nuns who weren't religious. The right. same way, you know, they were like, I'm not like those Jews. Right. I'm not obviously, you know. Yeah, so right. then right, obviously, obviously they were wrong. All right, Daniel so. Paraffin, you don't have it easy. <laughs> cold take. All that. Yeah. Cold, so cold I'm going to learn from them. Yeah. And uh, last story. It, should yeah. we do it? So real quick, uh, we are at uh, two o'clock right now. Okay. Do you should want to just, finish this? Do you we, leave? What do you want to do? You can go ahead. We're just do a quick lightning round here. All right. Do you want to, I got to go. Do you want to say everyone, well, Everyone in Ukraine seems to be about to die, and that sucks. So that's my hot take. <laughs> okay. Good. We'll Great. Good right. job. Right. Bye, Andrea. Bye. She is leaving. And that's our show. Thank you so much for listening to Majoring in Everything. I'm your host, Andrea Jones Roy. And Majoring in Everything is a proud member of the World's Smartest Podcast Network. Be sure to check out worldsmartestpodcastnetwork.com and our partner shows. We are edited by Eric P. Stipe, who says that I need an outro. So I'm making one. Eric. Does this count? Are you happy? I hope so. Thanks again for listening. Keep majoring in everything. Bye.